Welcome to Physics for Good, I'm Allison Boley, and today I want to talk about focus. Not the kind of focus that can help you on a basketball court or in school or at work, um, but the focus that's actually a point in space that's associated with uh, every lens and every curved mirror. To demonstrate the focus, I set up four lasers as parallel as I could make them. Not just parallel to each other, but parallel to something called the optic axis, which is a line that runs straight through the middle of a mirror, which in this case is just a piece of aluminum. Now notice where the reflected rays from the red laser meet, and if we open up the mirror just slightly enough to let the green light in as well, we will see the reflected rays from the green laser meet at the same point, and that point is the focus. So that brings us to the first thing we can say about the focus, which is that incident light, which is parallel to the optic axis, after it interacts with the mirror, or later on we'll deal with a lens, uh, it converges at the focus, or it passes through the focus. And as it turns out, this can also work in reverse. So if we put a light source at the focus, or at the focal point, uh, then that light, once it interacts with the mirror, or later on we'll deal with a lens, um, it will actually go out parallel to the optic axis. And in fact, this is how some car headlights can work, is you could put a light source at that focus, and then it will reflect off of a mirror at the back of the headlight, and then that light will come parallel out your car headlight. So if that's not interesting enough, check out what happens when I change the shape of the mirror. Notice the location where the reflected rays of the red lasers intersect is now different than the location where the reflected rays of the green lasers intersect. We no longer have that one crisp clean focus. This is called spherical aberration. And this is why spherical aberration matters. So in 1990, the Hubble Space Telescope was deployed. And in 1993, it took this image on the left of the M100 galaxy. Why is it so blurry? Because of spherical aberration. So astronauts actually had to go fix the camera, and then in 1994, it took this image on the right of the same galaxy. Which brings me back here, which at least at the time of this recording is the future home of the Challenger Space Center of Arizona. I spoke with John Vandewater and Jordan Goddard to discuss their work and what they hope to accomplish when the relocation is complete. Well, the Challenger Space Center has been in existence for almost 20 years now. We do a lot of educational programs, things like stargazing, summer camps, uh, team building, uh, different corporate events. We have a bunch of schools that come through on field trips. A lot of educational stuff dealing with space and science. Excellent. We do a lot of both uh, in-house programs as well as outreach to different schools as well as other organizations, Boys and Girls Club, uh, a lot of the, the preschools. We do a lot of little kid programs all the way up to we've done retirement homes and a lot of programming for the elderly as well Very cool. to keep them excited about space and science and all the advancements right. of technology. Right. Oh, that's awesome. In addition to letting me hold a meteorite, Jordan also taught me a little bit about heat shields. So these are the uh, panels that they would use on the space shuttle. Cool. Um, so as you can see, they look very different, but these yes. would all have been found on the shuttle. Okay. Um, so depending on where it was on the shuttle, they would have different panels uh, or different ceramic uh, tiles okay. to um, form the shape around it. So what these were uh, designed to do was to protect it from the extreme heats of reentry. Okay. Uh, so a lot of older um, spacecraft we usually have uh, heat shields that would. Uh, leave the spacecraft, they would uh, just burn off as they were re-entering. Uh, with the shuttle though, they were designed to be reusable. Okay. So they could reuse them, they would usually end up replacing some of them after a launch, uh, just depending on what sure. happened to them, uh, some got damaged. Um, so they are mostly a ceramic material, uh, so you can awesome. see they are very yeah, they're lightweight. Pretty light. Yeah, and then each one actually has a serial number on it, just like that one, you yeah, can see yeah. it better on there. And that would uh, correspond with where it would actually be found on the shuttle. Oh, very cool. So they actually had to develop, uh, so the first flight of it, um, so they picked it up in a Boeing, a specially modified Boeing, and then okay. they just dropped it in the atmosphere, see how, you know, sure. the flight systems and all that. Right, right. Well, when it landed, they realized they had lost a bunch of these tiles. Oh, okay. So that's not something they want for no. the real one. So they actually had to figure out a way to get a felt material behind it, mm -hmm. um, okay. and then a special epoxy glue to keep, actually keep them in place during the flight and reentry. Very cool. So uh, these are actually really important, and unfortunately, uh, one of these being damaged is what caused the uh, Columbia incident. Oh wow! So on reentry, uh, one of the heat shields uh, was damaged underneath the wing by one of the fuel tanks, mm -hmm. uh, and it caused a burn through point there, and it ignited right. the rest of the fuel that was still on board. Oh wow! Um, so they so these are pretty different thicknesses. Oh yeah. Let's see if I can raise them a little bit. 
So, so I'm guessing I, this was on a part of the ship that was. If the I recall, was... this should be around the nose okay. of the shuttle. Okay. So this would experience a lot of heat too, since they okay. would usually have the nose a bit upwards as they come in. Oh, right. And okay. then, if I recall correctly, the white ones should be around the wings, the underside. And actually, I think that's why it has oh, one of those yeah. divots there as well. I thought it was just broken. No. <laughs> <laughs> they do damage very easily, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this is Physics for Good, 50% of the ad revenue generated from this episode will go to the Challenger Space Center of Arizona. Uh, so besides just watching this video, how else can viewers uh, support you? Uh, you can always go online to our website, azchallenger.org. On the, the main page, there is a donate option, so people can donate time as well as financially. We are always looking for new volunteers to really help excite both the previous generations as well as generations in the future on the futures of space and science. Awesome. Thanks for watching. If you like what you just saw, please consider subscribing right here and sharing the video with a friend. Also, check out the video description where you'll find a link to the charity you just saw as well as some affiliate links.